Okay. Good morning, everyone. So, in interpretation of visual fields is a very important diagnostic criteria for not only for diagnosis of glaucoma but also to assess progression. And all of us use the automated perimeters. Automated perimeters because of their standardization and testing techniques, they have data to compare and analyze, and they can help us in an assessing or monitoring progression. They use the property of differential light sensitivity. I'll be basically talking about the Humphrey field analyzer, which I use. The differential light sensitivity means that we are testing the capacity of a retinal point to differentiate the contrast between the background illumination and the stimulus brightness. As far as the point patterns are concerned, with their six degree spacing, the 30 and the 24-2 are used to assess initially in the early stages of glaucoma. And in more later stages, more advanced stages, when it's just the central field which is left behind, with their two degree spacing, 10-2 and the macular fields are used to assess. As far as the strategies are concerned, CETA, that is Swedish Interactive Thresholding Algorithm, has almost totally replaced the full thresholding one because it is as accurate and it takes almost less than one third of the total time. So uh, if we want to read a visual field printout in a meaningful, useful way, it's good to divide it into 10 zones and study each zone separately, of which the zone one tells us which test was performed and on whom, and zone two tells us how reliable and meaningful the test is. Zone three is the raw data, which is the actual threshold sensitivities of the points, retinal points measured in decibels. The pictorial representation of which is given the grayscale, wherein the weaker point is displayed as a darker shade. It's good to assess, have an idea about the extent, depth, and pattern of the visual field effect, good to communicate with the patient. It uh, g gives us an idea about the high false positive with the white scotoma and high false negative with the clover leaf pattern. But th then it has its own flaws, and so we don't use it for the final diagnosis. From here onwards, the stat pack, which is the uh, software of the Humphrey Field Analyzer, started functioning. It has compared the patient's raw data against the normative age match database. And the actual deviation values are given in the total deviation numerical plot. The statistical or the probability significance of which is given in the total deviation probability plot. Now from the total is obtained the pattern deviation numerical plot by doing away with the generalized reduction of sensitivity by adding the seventh best point on the total to all the points on the total so that there is a general elevation of the field against which the localized field effect is highlighted. Again, the statistical significance of which is given in the pattern deviation probability plot. Now, zone 9 includes the global indices, of which the mean deviation and the visual field index give us almost the same uh, meaning, which means that how much reduction or worsening of the visual field on an average has occurred as compared to the age matched normative patient or population database. The difference being that mean deviation is measured in decibels, VFI, and percentage. The other, other difference is that VFI is like more center weighted. It gives more weightage to the central points and is less affected by the media opacities like cataract. It is used to do the regression analysis, uh, which gives us the trend analysis in the GPA, the glaucoma progression analysis. As far as the pattern standard deviation is concerned, it gives us basically gives us an idea about the differences in sensitivities between two neighboring points, which is a very, very uh, cr good criteria in the early diagnosis of glaucoma, because it is exploiting a property of glaucoma wherein one of the points starts worsening over a period of time, and it keeps on doing so to an extent that the neighboring point is still holding on. And so the difference between the sensitivities between the two points keeps on increasing, which is displayed as an increasing or a worsening PSD. And that is the time when PSD assessment is the most important. Later on the st stage of the disease, when the neighboring point is also started coming down, then the difference between the two points is coming down, PSD becomes less effective. Zone 10 exploits another important property of glaucoma, wherein very in the very early stages of the disease we find threshold difference sensitivities between the superior and the inferior hemisphere, which is very specific of glaucoma. And so we compare five zones, mirror images of points between the two hemispheres, and any statistically significant difference is displayed as either glaucoma hemifield as outside normal limit or borderline. Now, it's, uh, uh, we cannot overemphasize the fact that the test should be done with all the due precautions and the correct entries should be made. For example, the name, age, uh, everything is important. You may spell, for example, Sanjeev with a single E or a double E. It may be the same patient for you, but then the software is going to register as two different patients whose data cannot be compared. So uh, similarly, if you use a broad frame a rim lens instead of a rimless or a thin rim lens, you may get a sp uh, this type of uh, peripheral scotoma, which can also occur because of a small pupil, which was the case here. And when the pupil was dilated, as you can see, the field has significantly improved. A generalized reduction of sensitivity like this, where GHT is showing abnormal, 
general reduction of sensitivity, a bad total and an absolutely normal pattern field means that there is a general reduction of sensitivity which could have occurred either because of a small pupil, cataract, other media opacities, but can, it can also happen because of a refractive error correction which was not done, which was the case here. A minus 7 adapter was not included and when it was, as you can see, the field has significantly improved. If you enter a wrong age, the patient's data is going to be compared to a wrong age match database and so you'll get a meaningless result. All the time you have to keep on monitoring the fixation either with the video monitoring, the gaze tracker and then the machine is doing by itself by the hale croco method wherein it is uh, projecting some few of the stimuli to the blind spot and the patient should not be able to see. And now uh, we, we cannot again overemphasize the fact that fixation loss uh, can give you a test which is meaningless like this. But howsoever a cooperative patient is, an absolute uh, fixation loss can be because of also incorrect location of blind spot which was the case here which with the better instru uh, this thing from the technician, the test improved. Now to in an early visual field to be called as a glaucometer, Anderson's criteria should be fulfilled, which means that at least three or more adjacent points should show threshold sensitivity significantly, statistically significantly decreased with at least p-value less than 5%. At least one of the points should be p-value less than 1%, PSD should be uh, affected with p-value less than 5% and GHT should show abnormal. We can utilize the glaucoma fields uh, to divide it and, or uh, classify them into mild, moderate and severe looking at how bad the central field is looking like, how many pattern points are affected in the pattern deviation plot and what is the mean deviation. Mean deviation anything less than minus 6 is mild, moderate is up to minus 6 and severe is up to more than minus 12 decibel. But the severity is also we will be affected by how uh, the central four paracentral points are looking like. Is there a macular split or not? If you find even a single point zero in among the four paracentral points in the raw data, then you have to again check it with a 10 dash to whether there is a macular split or not. In this case, if the four paracentral points look like this, there is no macular split, but here it is, which worsens the prognosis. So if you actually have a visual field printout, how will you start? Where do you start reading the printout? Uh, so if you see few visual field defects in the property plot, First of all, go and check if it's a reliable field, then start interpreting the property plot by comparing the total and the uh, pattern deviation property plot, wherein a uniform generalized field defect like this, where there is a bad total and absolutely normal pattern is not a glaucomatous feature, and so you can overlook. But an irregular generalized field defect like this, where there is a bad total and a localized field defect in pattern is definitely suggestive glaucoma as also a localized field defect where there is a bilaterally symmetrical field like this. So in such cases, you start looking at the fields. If you have a glaucoma suspect, you will see that the Anderson's criteria is fulfilled. The reliability indices should be as near zero as possible. And you will focus on the pattern standard deviation, glaucoma hemifield test, and the mean deviation. In an established glaucoma, you are concerned more about whether the, the, there is an extension in terms of uh, pattern and depth, and you'll keep on looking at the macular status. Thank you.